In this lecture, we are going to learn how error handling works with async and await. With async and await, we cannot use catch method which we used earlier in our previous examples because we can't really attach it anywhere. To do error handling with async and await, we can make use of try and catch block. Try and catch block is nothing new in JavaScript. It has been a part of JavaScript language since the beginning. Okay, so try and catch has nothing to do with async and await. We can use try and catch block even with regular JavaScript code. Now, in the previous lectures of this course, we have learned that unhandled errors or uncaught errors are not good for your program. Let's understand why. So let's create a variable x. Let's assign it with the value 10. Let's create another variable y. And this time, let's create this variable using const keyword. Okay, so const y. To this, let's assign a string value. Let's say maybe hello world. Now, let's try to reassign this value y with another value, maybe 100. Okay, so here we are trying to reassign a val value to a constant variable. Okay, so we know that it is not possible to reassign a value to a constant type but here we are trying to do that so here javascript will throw an error because it is not possible to assign reassign a value to a constant type right so at this line javascript will throw an error now after this line let's have a console.log statement and let's try to log a message let's say have a nice day okay something like that now let's save the changes and let's see what happens. Here you can see we have an uncaught error and this error says assignment to constant variable and it is at line 451. So at 451 we are trying to assign a value, reassign a value to a constant variable and that's why we have this uncaught error. Now if you notice after this line we have this console.log statement and this statement didn't get executed because we don't see this message in the developer console. So whenever we have an uncaught error in our JavaScript program, the line at which that uncaught error occurs, after that, the execution of the code stops. So here, this uncaught error has occurred at this line 451. And after this, whatever line of code we have in this program, that will not get executed. And this is the main disadvantage of having uncaught errors in your program, not handling uncaught errors in your program. Because when you have an uncaught error, after that, the script stops execution. And that's why we should always handle or always catch uncaught errors in our program. Let's understand how to do that with try and catch block. So, in try and catch block, first we use try keyword then we use curly braces so this is a try block inside this try block we write those codes which we think that it can you know throw some uncaught errors so in this example we know that this code is going to throw some uncaught errors okay so let's paste it here inside this try block then every try block has a catch block okay Okay, so with every try, we should have a catch block like this. And to this catch, whatever error happens in this try block, that error is passed to this catch block. So let's call it maybe ERR. Okay, so this ERR is an error object. You can name it anything, but to this, the error object will be assigned. Okay, the error which has occurred inside this try block. And inside this catch block, we can handle that error. So for handling, let's simply log that error message in the developer console. Okay, so let's say error and then let's append the error message to this. So err dot message. All right. Okay, so again, in the try block, we write the actual code. Okay the code which we think can throw some error and then for that try block we need to have a catch block so whenever an unhandled error occurs inside the try block 
that error will be handled by this catch block and to this catch block this try block also passes the error which has occurred okay and then inside this catch block we can handle it so when we handle an error in that case it does not stop the execution of rest of the code okay it does not stop the execution of the script let's see that let's save the changes here so you can see at this line an error occurred so that error you know has been passed over to this catch block and inside this catch block we are handling that error so here we are what we are doing for handling we are simply logging the error message and you can see that error message has been logged here and the execution of this console.log statement didn't get stopped this console.log statement also got executed okay so when we handle an error it does not stop the execution of the script but if we have an unhandled error in our program that stops the execution of script and this is how we can handle errors in our javascript program using try and catch now let's understand how to handle errors for async and await so let's go up and somewhere we have written okay let's copy this code from here let's paste it here and let's also uncomment this code all right so what we are doing here this is the same uh, code which we wrote in our last lecture so here we have created an async function and from within this function we are making an ajax request using this fetch api to get information related to united states once the promise returned by this fetch api is settled it will get assigned to this response variable from that response variable we are trying to get the data okay and again this json method is going to return a promise once that promise is settled it will get assigned to this data variable okay so this await method will make sure that the value you know the promise returned by this response.json and this fetch api when it gets resolved i mean when it when it gets settled then only it gets assigned to these variables and finally we are logging that data now let me comment this code here because we don't need it for now and now what i want is i want to call this get country info function when we click on this get country button so let's first get access to this button by using get element by id method and to this we need to pass the id of this button so let's open index.html file uh, and the button id is okay so this is the button you know this is the button element which is displaying this button in the web page so let's copy its id let's go to script.js and let's pass it to this get element by id method and on that let's add an event listener now here we want to listen to click event and when this click event happens we want to call this get country info function all right and that's it let's save the changes and let's see what we get so let's click on this get country button and now you can see the information related to united states have been logged here so currently this fetch api is returning a resolved promise and that resolved promise gets assigned to this response variable then from that response variable we are getting the actual data which we are assigning to this data variable and then we are logging it now we have learned that if fetch api returns a rejected promise only when there is no internet connection so let's simulate that situation okay let's first clear this console let's go to network tab and here from here let's select offline so this will simulate the no internet connection situation now when i click on this get country button this time this fetch api will return a rejected promise and that rejected promise will be assigned to this response variable so here an error will occur right the rejected promise contains the error let's click on this get country button and you can see again we have an uncaught error and what is the error says fail to fetch so this fetch api was not able to fetch the data which we have requested for so it returned an you know a rejected promise which get assigned to this response variable and a rejected promise contains the error so here we need to handle that error 
let's go back to network tab again and let's again set it back to no throttling and here let's use try and catch block to handle this error so let's first write the try block and let's wrap this code inside this try block and every try block should have a catch block and to this catch block we pass the error object and inside this catch block for now let's uh, you know simply log the error message so let's say console.log let's say error occurred and let's also log the error the actual error message so er dot message and that's it now let's save the changes so let's click on this get country button so currently this fetch api is returning a result promise so no error has occurred okay now let's go back to our network tab let's change it back to offline okay let's go back to console and again click on this get country so you can see now we don't have any unhandled error in the developer console and we are handling this error and we are logging the error message and you can see here it is it has logged error occurred failed to fetch so in this way using try and catch we can handle errors returned by async and await okay so it's as simple as that let's again go back to uh, network tab let's change it back to node throttling go back to console let's click on this get country again and this time it should return the correct i mean the resolved promise all right let's clear the console so here we have used the try and catch block to handle the error returned by async and await now is it possible to handle the error returned by async and await using catch block well we can do that so let's see how we can do that let's remove this try and catch block from here so we don't need it anymore because now we are going to see how we can handle it using catch method Okay. All right. Now here, when we are calling this get country info, uh, instead of calling it like this, let's provide a callback function for this add event listener. And inside this callback function, let's call this get country info. Now we have learned that when we use a sync and await on a function, that function returns a promise that means here this function is going to return a promise okay so when it returns a result promise then we are simply uh, using that result data here in this code but when it returns when this get country info returns a rejected promise we are not handling it anywhere now we want to handle it using catch method right so here this get country info is going to return a promise and on that promise we can call this catch method and then we can provide a callback function for this catch method which will get executed when this get country info returns a rejected promise so in order to handle it let's use uh, maybe arrow function so this error object will be passed to this catch method and here we simply want to log that error message so let's first say uh, catch error just to you know make sure that it is coming from this catch method it is being handled by this catch method and then say error dot message let's see if it works let's save the changes let's click on this get country so currently there is internet connection so this fetch api has returned a resolved promise now let's go to network tab and let, before that let me clear this let's go to network tab again let's change it back to offline let's go to console tab and now let's click on this get country and you can see we we are still able to handle the rejected promise returned by this get country info function okay so using catch method also you can handle the uh, rejected promise returned by the async function but i think uh, try and catch is a better alternative 
but again it's a matter matter of personal choice how you want to handle your error okay so this is all from this lecture if you have any question feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day